Thank you. I am also going to read three. And the first one is titled Solitude. You rammed me with your shopping cart in a grocery store, for God's sake. Next to the apples and the almonds and the other lemons, scurrying to replenish their supply of high fructose corn syrup gruel. You didn't see me. Your cellular pacifier was stuck to your face. The newest, smallest, fastest 4G slam and noisemaker money could buy. You suckled like the runt of a litter fighting siblings on the belly of a sow. You fear being alone in a crowd. You fear solitude somber and silent. You cut me off in traffic in your gasoline-engorged SUV. You didn't see me. You were letting the holy mother of GPS land tell you when to turn, how to turn, where to turn, on a road you've traveled thousands of times. <laughs> you obey the voice behind the curtain because you fear being alone in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. You fear solitude somber and silent. You didn't hear my cries for help. You listened to your big screen behemoth regurgitate hundreds of channels at the push of a button. You remotely flit from one to the next like a moth seeking a brighter flame. A televangelist informs you that a fetus can sing the Star Spangled Banner. When you listen, you don't hear. When you hear, you don't listen. Background noise is your narcotic of choice, and you are addicted. You crank the volume up from sunup to sunset in the hope that it will drown out, that it will make null and void, solitude, somber and silent. And I fear all of you, and all of you fear me. For in that place where only we live, in that part of our souls with a no trespassing sign, we know that I am you, and you are me. And we fear each other in solitude, somber and silent. The second one is called Tenor Sex. Not Tenor Sax, Tenor Sex. <laughs> I'm getting excited just saying that. <laughs> the latches on the black case click the first notes in music yet to be played. I lift the lid and reveal cold gold metal, disassembled and encased in dark velvet. The curved metal is mute, yet says, play me. A sliver of cane sits silent and dry in a plastic tomb in the unlatched velvet-lined black case. The sliver of cane, also mute, says, wet me. We become intimate as I fondle and assemble my cold gold mistress. The neck slides slowly, slowly and silently into the body with the intimacy of practice promiscuity. Hard black rubber embraces the wet cane with the finesse of familiar and frequent fornication. I inhale deeply and begin the ancient dance of notes and lyrics in the song, If You Go Away. If you go away on this summer day, then you might as well take the sun away. All the birds that flew in the summer sky when our love was new and our hearts were high. When the day was young and the night was long and the moon stood still for the night bird song. But if you stay, I'll make you a night like no night has been or will be again. I'll sail on your smile, I'll ride on your touch. I'll talk to your eyes that I love so much. Then if you go, I'll understand. Leave me just enough love to hold in my hand. The notes and unspoken lyrics rebound from the floor to the walls to the ceiling in a conjugal cacophony. The last note lingers long past the measured end in a mournful wave of orgasmic sound and energy. The cane sliver and the gold tube are wet and spent and silent. Sweat from my forehead falls on the hard black rubber that embraces the cane that copulates with the cold mistress in me. My heart rate and breathing return to normal, and I long for a cigarette. 
The last one is titled Grapes. Sometimes, when the night pauses and the moon listens to the whispered secrets of passing clouds, I see you crossing the street carrying a bag of seedless grapes. I ask if I can walk with you and you say no. I want to do it myself. You hold up three fingers and remind me that you are this many old and you are a big boy now. I smile as you say this and cry as you turn across the street. Even though you are just this many old, your gait is that of a 90-year-old man. The magic elixir that is killing the disease that is killing you and killing me swells your body as it shrinks my soul. The grapes are a gift for your friend Vernon, who at 5 a.m. is still dreaming of snails and puppy dog tails. Vernon's mommy, an angel without wings, opens the door and welcomes you into her home and into her heart. She gives me a wave that says, I'll take care of you. Later, I hear the phone ringing. An angel informs me that the angel who wants to share the grapes with his friend is crossing the street again. I walk with you from behind the curtain. My soul shrinks with every 90-year-old man's step, and I marvel at what a big boy you are. I don't see you at the bus stop on your first day of school. I don't see you playing catch with me. I don't see you getting acne or going off to college or getting married or having a son this many old. But sometimes, when the night pauses and clouds whisper, I see grapes.